Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're lapping up gun trade luxury at the launch of a new Blazer shotgun. We have hunting YouTube, we have news with reports that the RSPCA is once again sticking its beak into where it's not wanted. First, fantastic French boar, or should that be sanglier sensationnel, does Roy Lupton get the chance to put the crosshairs on a beast that has evaded him for years? a boar virgin and we are in France to pop his onion. The boy Lupton has spent thousands of pounds and hundreds of hours up high seats across Europe in search of pigs but has never pulled the trigger. However we're hoping France will sort him out using a bow and or a rifle. Vive la France! The Domain des Tortines estate is an hour south of Toulouse, 20 minutes from the medieval fortress town of Carcassonne, and very beautiful. The hunting lodge is open and welcoming with plenty to suggest we're in the right place. Roy is the first bow hunter ever to try for a wild boar on these grounds, and his kit is creating a lot of interest. When you're drawing back, yeah, this will be on here, okay? Keep your fingers behind the trigger. Before heading out, he needs to make sure the bow is still on. Estate owner Patrick has a go, sort of. The £75 draw weight can be a bit of a challenge, especially when you don't know what to expect. With Roy happy, we're off after young fallow or boar. Now, you might have noticed that Roy is not wearing his usual headgear. As stealth is key, he has asked Jack Pike if they will send him the closest camo equivalent to his Stetson. Now you see him, now you don't. The English oak pattern fits in well with the background of the surrounding French woodland. We spot deer, but nothing anywhere near close enough for the bow. We've been stalking that group of deer down, and they were just in this lovely little wooded valley here, and we could see an animal broadside. And it was only about 30 yards, but it was a, a decent mile, and that's not what we're after. After only a few minutes, we get our first boar encounter, and it's a massive anticlimax. The piglet just grunts its way around us. Meanwhile, Roy is having a bow malfunction. Where have been stalking? put the um, release and pushed it in the mud and it wouldn't close. Uh, it certainly gets the blood going. Our first proper chance appears through the trees. It's a perfect cull animal, but the shot's not right. There's a lovely little group of pigs that came through there and stopped. Absolutely superbly, but they were just about 44, 45 yards. Again, <laughs> if that's the opportunities we're getting, we're going to have to shoot out of that lane. But the day's still young. I never think I should have taken that shot. Moving deeper into the forest, we get a chance to see some of the bigger boys on the estate. It really is blood pumping stuff, and if you've never realised just where the tusks start and finish on these wonderful animals, here's one we prepared earlier. That exterior. Okay. 
back to the stalking and it's a real thrill being in boar country. As much as we'd like a chance on one of these Kylers, Roy knows the limitations of his arrows. They definitely do the job on young boar, but these tanks could be too tough. More about that later. Time for some lunch and here's another good reason to travel to France for boar. The food. It is delicious. As the light fades, Patrick suggests we release the hounds. Traditionally at this time of year it's driven boar. In the spring the high seats come into their own. With Roy in position facing a vast expanse we're not feeling confident about our chances. Sensibly he chooses the rifle for this one. <laughs> Browning has sent him its new morale rifle in 300 Win Mag. Because we're doing driven bore in this particular part of the estate, um, we've bought the bow just in case uh, we, get a, you know, we get lucky and we get a bore stop within the sort of 30, 35 yard range. Um, but that is literally only to that oak tree in front of us, that's 30 yards down there. So they're saying the chances of the, the, the pig stopping within that range when the, the hounds are after them is probably going to be quite slim. So we've got the, the rifle as well and uh, if we get the, the opportunity at a, a reasonable pig at that, then we'll give it a go. Oh, here come the hounds. The dogs are working hard and their cry bounces around the valley. They're super listening to them, we'll give them like that. Let's definitely try to something in there now. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that. Super. Roy makes a fantastic, classic driven boar shot. Oh, that was phenomenal. Because you could hear them all coming up. You heard the baying and they were coming up towards us like that. And then all of a sudden I just caught sight of it coming from the left hand side, straight across in front of us. Oh, all the practice at Wolfsburg played off. Oh man. The spell of the wild boar is now broken. Excellent. All right, now we've got to deal with the bow. <laughs> He's done it. All that practice with an air rifle and remote controlled car has paid off. I really appreciate Your it. Your first. My first. No, that is super. You've broken the myth for the boar for me. Super, thank you. I appreciate that. We've done Poland. We've done Hungary, we've done Austria a few times and uh, never had never had luck and uh, yeah that is, uh, that is just superb to, uh, to come to France and, uh, and have that opportunity straight off, that was absolutely wonderful. And it was super as well with the dogs, yeah, listening to the dogs giving tongue like that coming up and working on the pig and then it just tucked through, so yeah, absolutely fantastic. If you can get 10 guns together and get yourself to France, 20 bore of any size will be yours for £1,000 per shooter, and they'll even supply the gun for free. This is not the wild lands of the Baltic, but brilliant if you want to encounter boar. The area that we're in, is, is, uh, is it famous in France for, for good hunting? Yeah, it's a very famous part in France for wild boar hunting, right. mainly, yeah, and mainly driven hunt. Yeah. We have some, a good population of boar on the estate from Young boar, medium-sized boar, till big tuskers, okay. like a few we seen this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have yeah we have a good population of boar, and it was just beautiful this morning when we were stalking through and seeing the, the big tuskers laid up in the woods. Be beautiful to see, yeah. yeah. Beautiful to see, yeah. And that's it. And so the you know the opportunity for either driven or for for stalk boar here is very yeah. good. We can do some combos, even driven during the day, okay. and have an evening stalking. There's no way limit. Or stuff on this particular stage, so you could have a bigger one or this one, any any size to okay. do when, when driven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we like to have more bow hunters yeah. coming here. Uh, maybe this time of year is not clearly the best time because it's winter, it's most for driven days. Yeah. But during the spring and during the summer, because we can shoot all year round. Mm -hmm. So yeah, waiting during the evening and the mornings. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be the best time for okay. proper bow hunting. We'll have yeah. to, we'll have to come back for that. Yeah. <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> 
back at the lodge, Patrick is celebrating Roy's first ball with some pink bubbles. All booze is included in the prize too. But we need clear heads for tomorrow because Roy's been told that if he gets a chance at a Tusker, he can take it. <laughs> the probability is, although we saw two or three and got up to them very well yesterday when they were catched up, um, <laughs> we might not even see one doing that today, but we'll, we'll give it a try, see what we can do. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we might get there. But uh, yeah, as I say, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. We've got to leave for the airport in a couple of hours, so we've really got to get going. The lights just cracked open. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we are seriously now on the 11th hour, bearing in mind we weren't even going to hunt this morning. We are still persevering with the bow, but we have the browning just in case. Roy has two chances. We get close to this one, but he makes a sharp exit when he hears the approach. The second one comes to us, but from the wrong direction, and he's not waiting around for us to get ourselves sorted out. If nothing else, it was a fantastic experience being face to face with a piggy at that range, and especially a nice size one as well. But I think we might be done. We'll get back up the top and see what we can do. The bow is proving just too hard at this time of year, so Roy is handed the rifle and placed in a high seat. We have time for one drive before we have to drive to the airport. The dogs work the ground, and then we spot a big pig. What a pig. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Patrick thinks the big male is about seven years old and will weigh in at about 110 kilos. He really is magnificent. You often hear how sharp and dangerous those tusks are, so Roy sees if a little pressure on an acorn makes an impression. So what we're going to do, just to try and demonstrate how sharp the tusks on these piggies are, is we've got an acorn here, we're just going to run it up along the side of the, the tooth there. So it cuts in quite well. Our trip to southern France has been exceptional. Wonderful hospitality, spacious, clean accommodation, lots of game and great value. Ah! Just show up in France, yep. we'll pick you up in, at the airport, okay. have a very nice weekend with a bag between 20-25 pigs, all included, meals, drinks, just take care of everything, you have all the nice food, right. which is the accommodation which is nice, yep. also drinks and of course all the driven days yeah. I mean super value you can't you really can't get better than that and obviously you know with the uh, the added bonus of having the opportunity to possibly get a big beastie like that I mean what more can you ask but and again I can't I can't thank the team enough and I can't thank you enough for the hospitality we've been showing here shown here it's been absolutely superb if you fancy a boar filled trip here on the Domaine de Tortine estate contact Pierre Jean on the email address on the screen plus all his contact details and prices are in this film's description well done, Roy. Excellent shooting there. And as we alluded, we will be bringing you bow on boar action in the next couple of weeks, though perhaps not what you'd expect. Now, somebody else who's known as a bit of a boar. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Buckingham Palace and shooters have together defended Prince Edward after a misleading photograph appeared in the press. The paparazzi snap shows the Earl of Wessex pointing a gun close to his son, the six-year-old Viscount Seven. However, the perspective is misleading and the child was several feet away. Prince Charles has also been photographed shooting. A Canadian politician has achieved his life's work of a national hunting day just before his retirement. MP Rick Norlock's private members bill will be celebrated the third Saturday in September 2015. Bill C-501, an act respecting a national hunting, trapping and fishing heritage day, has received royal assent. He says it took years of work. The gamekeeper who couldn't get a licence to control buzzards is taking natural England to court. The High Court has accepted an application from Ricky McMahon to proceed with a judicial review of natural England's decision not to issue a licence to allow him to control buzzards. He says they're causing serious damage to his pheasants and thus threatening his livelihood. 
there are now 300,000 buzzards in the UK and numbers have quadrupled in the last 40 years. Scottish sporting estates are to get a new tax. Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon is introducing a tax on shooting and deer stalking estates that she hopes will raise £7 million. Have you seen a woodcock or a widgeon in the UK? Basque members are being asked to use its green shoots mapping system to record the arrival of migratory species, such as woodcock and widgeon. You input information recording arrivals and sightings via an online mapping tool on basque.org.uk. Viking Arms has launched a new sporting website. The British gun importer, which distributes Ruger rifles in the UK, has set up vikingshoot.com with tips, advice and how-tos, as well as a full catalogue. Now is the RSPCA becoming too extreme? We know the answer to that in the UK, but the same question is being asked in Australia. With the RSPCA down under now actively campaigning against duck hunting, a newspaper is running a poll. Go to weeklytimesnow.com.au until the 9th of December and vote halfway down the page on the right. Thanks to Ian Lana for sending us the story. And finally, French police are investigating a paw print after a tiger went missing near Paris. Soldiers have been called in to help hunt for the Disneyland Paris tiger, with fresh paw prints spotted after the beast apparently crossed a major highway and slunk past a petrol station. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for fat. Thank you, David. Now, keeping that continental theme going, Blaza is best known for its rifles, but a few days ago, the Germans flew in to talk about shotguns. Well, I've come to the E.J. Churchill shooting ground in Buckinghamshire for a series of announcements from Blaza, one of them about this group of people behind me. We're here today because of three reasons, actually, because we are first, we are happily announcing our association with EJ Churchill shooting grounds, which is surely the best shooting ground in UK. And we are now giving them um, our F3 shotguns to test for their clients, as well as we hope for data sales, obviously. So that's very nice. And the second thing is that we are launching our new F3 model, the F3 Vantage, which has a mid-rip and it's all about HD vision as well as shooter's comfort because the shotgun actually allows you a great peripheral vision and because you don't have really to crouch with your head on the shotgun you feel much more comfortable while shooting and have better shooting results generally. The third thing is the launch of Team Blaza, a group of British clay shooters that Blaza and their gun dealer buddies have selected and are sponsoring. One of those new Team Blaza shooters is sporting clay shooter Henry Collins, and he has been trying out the F3 Vantage. I have got a Blaza F3 Vantage and a Blaza F3 Super Sport. I've just been trying them out, tried both of them out. Does this mean the world of English sporting might lose you to track? Oh no, no, no chance there. Um, what, what do you think of them? I love them, but I definitely prefer the, the Vantage over the two. Uh, the high rib on the Super Sport, it's nice, but it's just a little bit too high for me. Is that, I mean, if you were a trap shooter, would it be suitable? Yeah, that, that, I should think it would be better for me then. Are you happy you're not a trap shooter? Oh yeah, so I'm not, definitely not a trap shooter. Do you find trap shooters strange, boring people that you don't want to talk to? I've not talked to many trap shooters. What's attractive about it? It's just very, very pointable, easy to handle, and what I like about it is there's not many things to play with on it. So, like this one, it's got a fully adjustable rib, so I don't have to adjust the rib on this one. No adjustable comb on this model, but it does come with a semi Monte Carlo adjustable comb, and it just balances perfectly for sporting. <laughs> the first thing is uh, we are very proudly to present today our Blaza UK shooting team, which consists of eight shooting members from young to very experienced ones and we are very happy that we have these really great guys on board now. I've, I've won a few few things, uh, won county and East Midlands sporting competitions, uh, regularly come first in juniors and sportings and win A class and come second in A class. And were you teaching classes when you won? No I wasn't. I oh, know, it's terrible. So when did you move over to the dark side? Today. This is it? Yeah, this is it, this is the, the official official turnover. Right, well we're going to have a look at your career the next year and if you're not winning things, we're not going to buy Blazers. I'm sure I'll be winning something, I hope. Do Blazer proud. 
For more about Blazer, go to blazer.de. There you go, brand new shotgun just in time for Christmas. Now, from a shooting ground to the world of shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Uploaded in January, but recently posted to the Blaze News website, this is an amazing shot on a running white-tailed buck. Justin Walsh is on a shotgun hunt in Canada. Our buddies from Gunblast.com in the USA are hunting pronghorn antelope in Wyoming. Jeff Quinn, the beer deer of the Quinn boys, is armed with a weatherby. Waffenland TV is on a driven wild board day in November 2014. This film has him shooting an RX Helix Alpinist with aim points scope and 308 Winchester Hornady interlock 165 grain bullets. Here's how they shoot Ida in Denmark. Crickhandon is out at sea after the downy duck. Back to the UK and Varminter UK is on the pit pair syndicate in Somerset on a driven pheasant today. The second day of the season could have done with a bit more wind, he says. Nick Ridley is also out after pheasants. It's a rough walked up day over spaniels. He is eye wiped by his wife and encounters a disappearing pheasant. Now we are off to Scotland with a Frenchman. Universe Chasse-Pêche organises a grouse day over dogs. And finally, here's a short, sharp film titled Grouse Revenge. Ow, I bet that hurt. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you didn't like any of those, George Digweed has uploaded his latest film to Club Digweed. This month on Club Digweed, George is shooting a competitive round at Greenfield's shooting ground in Kent with ex-England and Kent county cricket player Rob Key. He's a very successful sportsman and he's let me get to him. Over the next few months, George is going to give Rob instruction on how to approach a shoot and ultimately to improve the score he posts on the day. He also delivers some sound advice on where to shoot those tricky bouncing bunnies. Because you're shooting down on a target, people lift their head. Consequently, as they lift their head, the gun comes up and they shoot over the top. In the Q&A section, George's shooting buddy Jamie Brightman offers insights into shooting with George on the circuit and there's some encouraging and not so encouraging words from the shooting world in Hello George. It's another packed show. To find out how to view it and to discover the benefits of joining Club Digweed, go to georgedigweed.com. Well, we are back next week. Please subscribe. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been... Feel Sports Britain, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.